we do want to get into training because, uh, and because, <laughs> you know, you think, um, well, what are you going to go talk about? You ask yourself, and then uh, you 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 uh, you could just talk about yourself, uh, and that's all good, especially if you got good things to say about yourself. But that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't help the public. Yeah, and I'd I'd like to um, we would like to give them something of value that they can uh, use in their own lives. Uh, and um, benefit of our experience. I've said this before. I'm going to say it many, many times. Um, protection. Uh, there have been a million men and a million dogs for a million years. So this ain't nothing that uh, I invented. You hear me? Yeah. It's been, men been working with dogs for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Long before all the psycho babble and um, the uh, clickers and long before any of that stuff. So I believe there's a relationship that dogs and men have had. When I say men, I mean all of mankind. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not gender specific. Um. And that is to help them. Uh, they're always, uh, when dogs and their owners have uh, relationships, uh, usually a uh, dog is happy to see his master, and usually it brings up some happiness in the master to have that dog around, whether it's a hug or a lick in their face or to the more... Um, 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 protective aspect. Uh, so here's the formula. Alarm, challenge, threat display, engagement. Those are the four ingredients of personal protection when it comes to your dog. Mm -hmm. So most trainers show up and they want to give you, they want to sell you college education. Um, and has some of that reason is if your dog isn't, doesn't have the aptitude for college, they get a chance to tell you, well, your dog can't do it. Um, uh, you need to buy my dog, my cousin's dog or somebody else's dog. And that just doesn't work for me. Um, a real trainer's got to show up and teach your dog something that's going to help you. So we started looking around, Lori and I, and we, went back to our small good book and uh, so that's how we're going to approach it um, who needs a personal protection dog mm -hmm. and Lori is going to read it to you and I might interrupt her um, and then of course she's going to send you some photographs and or video clip to uh, illustrate what we're talking about perfect okay perfect okay you ready Laura Sure. Okay then, let's go. <laughs> I am reading today from the book, An Owner's Guide to Raising Your Pet Protector. Mm -hmm. Written by two dog trainers, Michael Gypsy Stratton and Lori Burr. Do you know those people, Sean? <laughs> yes, I do. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Who needs a personal protection trained dog? First of all, let me share with you a story from my childhood. Now, I told you this story before, but it's in the book, so I'm go she's going to read it again. Go from ahead. Gypsy's childhood. When I was a child, my mother and I lived alone in the city. With no man in the house, we had to defend ourselves. One day, in the middle of the day, we were both in the house when we heard a noise of glass breaking. We both ran to the sound, and to our surprise and horror... We stood in the door of the bathroom and watched as a man was trying to break into our apartment. As we looked at him, looking at us, we knew we were in trouble. Thank God we had a half-breed collie mix named Bobby, who ran into the bathroom, jumped into the tub, and fought that man at the window. No, 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 wait a minute. Look, that's without any protection training. Right. No, no professional had shown up. This was just a really good dog 
that my mother had raised properly, meaning the dog only loved us. Right. Okay, go ahead. I have no doubt that dog saved my mother and me. And that moment I knew what a dog was for. I bring that same serious knowledge to my training. Personal pre personal protection training is noble and important. I have nothing against sport training, but I wouldn't bet my safety or life on sport. After all, it is a game and done for fun. When the bad guy shows up, there is no time for fun and games. That's right. Mm -hmm. So back to the question, who needs a personal protection trained dog? To answer this question, I will have to relate to my many years of experience as a personal protection trainer. I, I'll begin with young people who are moving into a new house in a new environment. Most people, some ancient reason, like to get a pup for the new home, especially if they have or are anticipating starting a new family. Another group are those who cannot afford to move and must stay put while new neighbors are moving in all around them. Still another group are old people whose children have moved away and find themselves alone in the house and don't have the physical strength they once had or are just intimidated by young punks in the neighborhood. Small business people who must open and close every day with receipts in hand, who need security and cannot afford to pay a security guard with days off, sick days, vacation insurance, and the like. These people need safe escort to their small business and safe escort to their car and then to the bank and then to their home. And of course, there is the largest group of people, women, Single wait a women. minute, wait a minute. What's the largest group of people? Women. Okay. <laughs> All right. Women are the most victimized group in our society. Whether they are single, single mothers working away from their home, homemakers, they need backup. They need backup. They need a living, breathing, no trespassing sign. You know, I have that. My Canis Panthers. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know that life is serious. Yeah. And there are serious bad guys out here. Mm -hmm. They walk to and fro and up and down all around us every day. Like snakes, they get close before they strike. They will trick or con their way past your dog. And before you know it, they're in your face or in your house. The bad guy won't let you know from 100 feet away. You won't have that much room or that much time. A personal protection trained dog's job is to be ready day and night, every day and every night. Now let me stop you there. Mm -hmm. You know, when you handle your dog the right way, they learn that that's their job and they love their job. Right. They know that's part of why they're in your group, and they take that on. I told you before, a good boy is is the the food for that for that dog to act like a dog. Right. When, when the dog acts like he's protecting you, you got to tell him, "Good boy." Right. A lot of people, you know, they want to tell the dog, "Oh no, stop being like that." No, no, no. Good boy. Okay, go ahead. Most people never, I repeat, never take their dogs to shows and to the country club. That's right. Mm -hmm. Most things learned there are sport and games and everybody is good. Even the decoys are gentlemen. Try la la Yeah, man. I've been on fields where the bad guys, they don't call them bad guys, they call them decoys, were able to, go, part of the, the work is, okay, after you've attacked me, and my dog has gotten you. Now pet my dog. That is ridiculous. Right, right. Go ahead. Bad guys come in all shapes and colors. They are not all gangbangers from the ghetto. 
Sometimes they're just sick people or jealous of your new furniture or car. That's right. Sometimes they are just wicked, evil people who are visiting the neighbors. That's right. Or roaming the area. Sometimes it's the ex-husband or even the new boyfriend. That's right. Who won't respect your home. Listen, ladies. Listen, church ladies. Sport <laughs> won't stand in the gap. Games won't help. For real protection, you need a personal protection trained dog. And let me stop you there. When you say personal protection trained dog, that doesn't mean that the dog is commando trained or uh, FBI trained or uh, Marine or SWAT team. Um, that's not what that means. Right. It means how you develop them. Uh, Lori, I told you before, Lori got me on to the term and the uh, aspect of pet protector. There you go, right. And that's what this, that's who I'm talking to. Right. Folks who love their dogs, but need their dogs to step up for them sometime. Right. And, and to have some type of expectation, they need to handle and train their dog to where the dog knows this is what I do for my master. Go ahead. To be able to vet the farm, you should seek out a professional personal protection trainer. Mm -hmm. We are afforded by our Constitution right. the God-given right to protect ourselves and our home. Amen. Mm -hmm. In the crucial moment, you need your dog's mind to be filled with personal protection, right. not chasing the man down the block. It's your personal protection dog. It is professionally trained. You won't have to chase the bad guy at all. That's right. That threat display, that alarm, that challenge, and that threat display is a written check that they that to that bad guy. Don't make me cash this check. Right. That's right. Now, if you just a fool, or you just on some drugs, or you just purely evil, you might have to go to the bank get this <laughs> check cash. Now, go ahead. Yes. If you'll recall, the question was asked, who needs a personal protection dog? We look at a wide cross-section of the population. I think after reflection, we or someone we know all fall into that number. Mm -hmm. It's not hard for an objective person to realize they need a personal protection dog. The problem, there are a lot of professional trainers claim to be training personal protection. That's right. But in reality, they're teaching a watered-down version of police, military, or Schutzen. So let's be clear and for real. Schutzen people admit that theirs is a sport. Police and military are outside the legal or moral boundaries of a civilian. Personal protection is defense, and defense only. All defense all the time. That's what personal protection is. Right. It's not chasing and apprehending folks. Go ahead. You will no longer be in the dark. Understand these so-called personal protection trainers don't care that they are misrepresenting personal protection because these people were professional and even expert in other training fields. Hold on. You know, man, you, 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 you remember Ripple? Yes. You're old enough to remember Ripple, right? Right. Well, so what a lot of trainers will do is they will get a champagne bottle and pour Ripple in it, fill it up with Ripple, and hand it to you and tell you this is champagne. <laughs> well, if you, if you don't know no better, you're going to think Ripple is champagne. <laughs> and yeah, you got to know something. Right. And so what they do to, they'll... they'll uh, uh, back it up by pulling, going to their truck and pulling out all kind of sleeves and suits and and this is for this and that or this increases that bite and they, look, I even have three different types of sleeves. So a person, a regular person, thinks, oh my God, this person is investing in all these suits and equipment. They must be telling me the truth. Well, I'm here to tell you it's not. Right. What, what we did years ago 
is we, I piled up a bunch of sleeves. I was arguing with folks on the internet from Europe and Africa and California and New York. Oh my God. <laughs> and uh, so I, I just got mad, of course. And I piled up all the sleeves we had and set them on fire. <laughs> <laughs> and Lori re- recorded that. And we put it on the internet and it's called The Sacrifice Made by Fire. Awesome. And, 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 um, You'll, you'll get that reference, Sacrifice Made by Fire. And um, I challenge all these uh, big shots. Burn up that equipment, not train my dog. Right. Train my dog to personal protection without all of that. Yeah. Because all of that stuff is unrealistic. A bear could bite you in those suits, yeah. and you could still fight him. Do all of that without that. Train my dog. Without that, and I'll believe you. Right. Well, I've trained dogs without those things for many, many, many years. So that's what the sacrifice made by fire is, and I'm, I'm going to have Lori just send it to you. They didn't change their methods or the science of their training. That's right. They didn't change the method or the science. Mm-hmm of their training. Go ahead. They just relaxed some of the existing rules, yep. called it sport, yep. and fed it to you. Yep. If the public realized... See, wait a minute. They call it sport because if they were truthful, they would be liable. Right. You know, in, uh, in all the laws in all the states, when it comes to bite laws, a dog is given a bite, then he's considered a dangerous animal. Mm-hmm. Every animal control in every state, every county has that line in their laws. So these trainers that are using all this super duper equipment, bite equipment, want to say sport because of the liability of the bite. Mm-hmm. That if you go, well, we're going to get to Judge Judy. But if you go to court and somebody says, did you teach this dog to bite? Oh, my God. You may not want to tell him the truth. Go ahead. Right. If you, the public, realize that you are civilians and not police or military. Civilians, not the police. You're not the military. Go ahead. And you want your dog for your defense, then the answer is obvious. You need a real, true professional personal protection trainer how will you know the difference trust your eyes and your ears if you don't hear defense and are not taught defense if the majority of your work is chase and bite then you may be certain you are not being taught by a professional personal protection trainer Mm -hmm. again they may be professional at military police or games but you can be sure they are not professional personal protection trainers Mm -hmm. personal protection is defense and only defense a professional personal protection trainer will teach your dog tactics that are necessary for success in close combat a professional personal protection trainer will teach you how to handle your dog on lead in your defense. The other guy, the so-called personal protection trainer, has only one tactic. Let the dog go. That's it. Mm-hmm. Just That's their tactic. Once you let go of that dog, except under fire, you will be standing naked and no defense for your personal protection. Facing the bad guy, and then Judge Judy. That's right. If there if, if there's not a uh, um, um, deadly projectile involved in this confrontation, you don't have the legal right to send your dog uh, distances to engage and bite and harm a, a human being. Right. He has rights too. He may be drunk. He may be a fool. But there's lawyers every day. On television, they got a list of things to call them about, and one of them is a dog bite. Right. You don't want Judge Judy in your life. No. <laughs> That's right. Go ahead. 
Handling your dog properly in defense will help save you from both. That's right. Help save you from the bad guy and also help save you from Judge Judy. Mm -hmm. Because a professional personal protection trainer is going to teach you some tactics that are involved. Right. There are some tactics taught now. I'm just watching guys crotch bites, under the shoulder bites, back bites, leg bites, foot bites. Man, mm -hmm. a bad guy is not going to hurt you with his crotch. Right. He's going to hurt you with his hands. Mm -hmm. He's not going to hurt you. There's no weapon he's going to have it coming out of his kneecap or his foot. Right. The weapon is going to be in his hand. And it's only two hands. So one of those hands that has the weapon has got to be the most important. That's tactically your target. Right. Um, okay. The proof of that is that they do it on, on, on these fields constantly. Even the police, when they do demonstrations, the proof is a man with a gun, the dog never, hardly ever, Bites the gun hand. Right. He's always taught to go for the off arm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's right. It makes no sense, yeah. Don't make sense, man. Because in those crucial moments, your dog has to be thinking, there's a weapon in that hand, in that hand. That's where I'm going. Right. Because either you're going to withdraw that weapon to keep your hand intact, or... You're going to bring it down to the dog, not to me, or the dog is going to put his mouth on that weapon hand, and you're not going to be able to use a weapon with that hand for a very long time. Right. So that's basically um, what I wanted Lori to read to you from this book. And, of course, she is selling this book. And uh, she's selling it with our autograph. It's going to be an autograph copy if somebody wants it. They can get it at rockofageskennel.info. Where, where can they get it, baby? Rockofageskennel.info. Okay. Uh, you can purchase for just $20. Right. Get your autograph copy. That's if right. If you purchase on Amazon or anywhere else, you will not get that autograph copy. That's right. And I won't stand for that. <laughs> <laughs> so... So uh, what we're going to, uh, so education, so that people can understand it, you don't go to college right off the bat. Right. It's, it's grammar school, high school, college. Mm -hmm. That's where people that are starting should start. Let's go grammar school. Mm -hmm. The most basic of all and most important is house protection. Most people have a fence or gate. That's the first barrier around your house. A dog sees that barrier and turns it into his territory. And most dogs, not just Canis Panthers, not just Rottweilers, most dogs, mixed dogs. I'm telling you, Bobby was a, was a collie mix, and I can't even tell you the other part of the mix. Right. So it's not about breed. Most dogs are territorial and will give an alarm when they realize that something in their territory is out of order. Mm -hmm. So when do our dog trainers, these big professionals, when do they work on alarm? They don't. Now, they may call it alert, but they're calling it alert attached to something else. Alarm is what it is, and you should... Uh, you should make your trainer work on the alarm aspect of training. This this is the grammar school part. Then challenge. The dog needs to go where the intrusion is occurring. And he needs to oppose it. And that's where the threat display comes in. Mm -hmm. Some growling, some hair up, ears pinned back. You know, most trainers... Back in the day, say, oh, God, that dog's got his ears back. No, we can't have that. Right. He, he, he's in defense or whatever. Mm, it shows fear. Man, please. Mm -hmm. I want some hair up. I want some ears pinned back, and I want some lips way up by his eyes so you can see every one of them tools he got in his mouth <laughs> that's going to affect your life if you violate this 
place. Right. My yard, my house. So that's how a dog, you got to teach alarm, challenge. You have to really dig in on that threat display. You got to get it up. Most dogs don't, most dog trainers don't want that. They want, get them. And the dog just mindlessly bites something. Mm -hmm. So, and another aspect is that, that I've always taught, if you get on this offhand, I always bring that weapon into play so that the dog recognizes that his bite is not stopping the threat. The threat is the weapon. Right. The threat is the hand that he's going to pick up something with to bash your head while you're just biting on his leg. So let's get straight. People, um, when they see what we're doing, as a matter of fact, I'm using a beagle in one of these clips. Wow. And I'm, and I'm using Hennessy, my uh, Canis Panther pup, in the other clip. And it is at the gate. Uh, it's a young man, uh, what's his name? Uh, Shane. Yeah, like the, like the, the gunfighter. Uh, this is his first time, uh, and the Beagle, it's her first time. Well, she's a good watchdog. She sounds off. But this is her first time being confronted. She's on lead, and here's the kicker. I'm sitting down. So a person, to illustrate that you don't have to be an athlete to uh, condition your dog in this manner. Right. And it's on lead. And why is it on lead? Because if my dog, who doesn't have confidence at the time, decides to retreat or turn tail, I can stop that. I can take that away. Uh -huh. And you know there's two instincts, fight or flight. Mm -hmm. If you can eliminate the flight, what's left, man? Fight. That's right. Yeah. Give it to me. So that's why it should start out on lead. Okay. So that the handler, the owner, can help his dog make the proper decisions. Right. And and so you'll see me sitting down. I start out with the uh, beagle, and you'll see her hair come up on her back, and you'll be able to hear a little snarling and some barking, and she will advance at some point. Uh, and then, of course, I bring Henny out, and Henny's just, man, I just can't, can't tell you how good a dog he is. Mm -hmm. He's just the sweetest thing. Tender kisses. But when it comes to somebody invading this, uh, his face, he ain't playing. Right. So, so, um, is there anything else, baby, you want to tell him? About Hennessy? No, not about <laughs> Hennessy. <laughs> Hennessy is very silly, though. You can't even put on music in the house. And if you play any rap music, he goes off. Right. Who is in this house? He's not supposed to be here. <laughs> he can, we can put somebody on speakerphone, and he goes off because, hey, whose house? Who's in this house? That's not our family voices. That's somebody in this house. So, so I'm just saying, uh, I love him to the death because of those aspects. Um but it's all because of how he's been raised and handled. Right. So most trainers will tell you the most important part of this thing is the go. Mm -hmm. the, the, to go at the guy, to run a mile if necessary to get the guy. The most important part of it to me and every church lady in the world is when they call their dog, their dog comes to them. Mm -hmm. Because if a dog comes to them, you know, like back to the house, let's fall back to the house. Recall. Recall. Because a dog that is fully engaged in most sport, even police, everybody, the hardest thing in the world is to get that dog out of that engagement back to your side. Right. So that's something that needs to be done. Also, I know that if a dog does give, give up and run off, you want to be able to call your dog back into the house. We'll get back behind this door and we'll fight here. Mm -hmm. So so that that prey and that suit stuff, you know, you'll hear the term sleeve happy. 
Right. That means a dog is just cracked out on biting sleeves and equipment. Yeah. Um, and if he doesn't have that motivation, that addictive um, uh, stimulant, they don't work. Yeah. So, I like I said, uh, Lord's going to send you the sacrifice made by fire. <laughs> and, and I did it because arguing with so many dog trainers, believe me, around the country and the world, that um, did not believe in defense. They believe in prey um, and and bite, chase and bite. Right. So um, that's basically it. Uh, any other questions? Go ahead. Well, yeah, you yeah. mentioned talking about recall, how important it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you're raising a dog and handling your dog every day, I think two of the most important things is learning the word no. That's right. No means no. Mm -hmm. Stop what the heck you're doing right now. Now. Because I said no. Mm -hmm. And it baffles me to this day, as many dogs as I have trained, people will come and they still have never taught their dog the word no when he's three years old. Yeah. Yeah. You're pointing fingers at them. Yeah. Shake their hand at them. Yeah. Say all kind of stuff. But no one ever says no. Yeah. I tell them all the time, no. It's going to stop them from anything. Mm -hmm. And recall. Mm -hmm. I call my dogs one time. I got a yard that's an acre long. Joe, come. Yeah, he's on the way. A couple seconds, he better be back to them stairs. If not, I'm panicking. Oh, my God, did he get out of the yard? Why did he come back? Did he fall down? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Recall is so important. And all it is is just get calling their name and getting them to back to your door. Create that habit. It's more important than the goal. It's more important than going all the way out there to bite somebody. Come to me is more important. The no and come is more important than the drive to uh, chase and bite and hold. Right. Um, you know, I always tell people, you know, when you talk to your dog, try to command your dog. Let them know it's a serious situation. But there is one time I will beg, and that's when I want them to come back to me. Right. And I don't want my dog running across that cornfield. Oh, please, dog, don't run across that cornfield. Right. I don't want him running this street. Come here, please. Come on, baby. Come on now. Don't run in that street. Yes, indeed. Mm-hmm. That's you know, That's how important come back to me is. Right. If you don't hand, if you don't handle your dog right, it'll have no value. That's right. Right. Would. Something uh, I gotta tell you though, because my son heard your broadcast last time. Yeah. And he loved it, and he said, "Dad." He said, you know, Gypsy is retired. You got to be the dog father. I'm like, what? I'm like, what? He said, yeah, Dad, you got to be the dog father. So I told him I was going to say this, so I hope you don't edit that. I hope you put that in there so when he listens to the next one, he'll get a big smile on his face because I told him I was going to mention that. All right, man. If you need me, call me. Exactly. And I I like to ask a couple questions about – specifics about training so say i'm gonna get a new putt what are some of the things that i should do if i want a dog that's going to be a good home protector what do i need to do with that puppy in the beginning well first thing you need to do is don't let that dog well first thing you need to do my wife's point tell them what they need to do baby is order a copy <laughs> of an owner's guide to raising your pet protector. Yes, awesome. sir, because there's a lot in there. Right. And it's, and it's for people. It's not for the sport guy. Mm-hmm. It's for regular people. Uh, but the first thing that I think you need to do um, is solidify the relationship between yourself and the dog. A dog needs a master. Dogs are born to have masters. They're not foxes coyotes, wolves. Foxes, coyotes, wolves don't have I need a master genetics. You got me? Right. A dog does. So you need to fill in that blank. I'm your master. You're my dog. So the other thing, and that's through the way you handle it, hug it, kiss it, talk to it. But also, you don't want your dog to make a whole lot of mistakes where it become a habit to go pee in your den. Right. Or uh, chew on your shoes 
So you want to curtail that ability. So Lori had told me, use a crate. So now, and she's totally right about it. Because now... Well, crate training develops a great relationship. Crate training does develop a great relationship. So now, though, if dog messes up my house, man, I'm mad at that dog. Mm -hmm. I walk in the door, I smell it, I see it, you done tore up my leather coat. Oh, my God, I can't stand you. Right. The dog sees that, feels that. So pretty soon, um, it's a matter of fear and and regret when you come home. Um, and the punishment that you, that you meet out can damage your relationship. Mm-hmm. And I tell people all the time, the more you kick your dog, the more susceptible he's going to be to the bad guy. Right. The more whippings you give him and, and threats and beating on him, the bad guy going to come and do the same thing and the dog's going to give in to it. Um, because you've conditioned him that way. All these damn dogs we got, man, nobody growls at us. You hear me? Right. I hear people all the time. Oh, man, the dog growled at me because I went in the kitchen while he was eating. Oh, man, the dog growled because I went to get the toy he was playing with. Man, my dog growled at me because I came out in the in the middle of the night. Come on, man. First of all, we got we to never learn no means no. That's right. Well, we got a house full of dragons. <laughs> and all the dogs we have had are dragons. And none of them have growled at us for any reason under any circumstance. Just handling and raising right. your dog. You know, you don't treat them like a little baby. That's right. A dog need a master. You don't need a mommy. You can love them and spoil them, yep. but they got to respect you. You got to control their life. If they don't respect you, then... They ain't worth having in your house. And I'm, I'm going to give you this, too, before you ask your next question. I've been thinking about it all the time. You know, a, a person uh, will go to a trainer, and that trainer will put all this fabulous bike chase uh, apprehension stuff. Uh, even in the personal protection world, uh, make a dog just, you can pay a lot of money and spend a lot of time. You can spend too much time, too much money and end up with too much dog. More dog than you can actually handle. Right. And in some cases, more dogs than you can actually live with. Right. So go ahead. You asked about a puppy. That I went all the way to where it becomes a dog. But uh, in the beginning, you need to control your animal, uh, impress upon your animal that you're the master. Dogs are genetically made to fall into that relationship. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, like Lori have taught me, use a crate so that the dog's not making so many bad mistakes so that you have to punish it constantly and the dog learns to grow up in fear of uh, doing anything. Go ahead, what's the next question? You got another one, right? But one of the things is they overemphasize socialization and the more that I, I understand about socialization, the more I don't want my dog to be over socialized. You're telling me. That's right. Because I want it to be loyal to me and my family. You know, Earl Jones used to teach that uh, in the old days um, that your dog don't need socialization. Your dog needs manners. Right. Teach your dog manners. Right. To, to not attack people unless, of course, they're attacking you or you tell them to attack them. And how to act. Sit down, dog. Mm-hmm. He's talking to me. He ain't talking to you. Right. Um, every dog you walk up on, dog, is not a playmate for you or a potential fight for you. Right. That the dog needs to have manners, not socialization. Mm-hmm. People put that... You need, you need to be socialized with who's in that house. Go ahead, honey. I'm sorry. People put that view of socialization in your head. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's overrated for sure. Dogs don't need to be social with anybody else but who's in their family. That's, That's right. You bought that dog. You got that dog. That's right. You and your family. You didn't get the dog to go down the road yeah, this ain't my three sons you remember my three sons yeah. man they had that dog named no, Travis which all the time 
You yeah. remember Travis and my three sons? Yeah. Yeah, Travis was everybody's dog. Yeah. <laughs> Walk in people's houses and, and everybody fed Travis and hugged him. And that. No, man. My three sons is a fantasy world. See, I had... It's funny you say that because uh, in my neighborhood, I grew up in the inner city. In my neighborhood, yeah. we, had, we had Raider, who was a okay. big, big old black German shepherd that you knew that could handle business, but he was everybody's friend. He would live. Yeah. We had a door that didn't wouldn't latch all the way if somebody didn't pay, pay attention. We'd be sitting watching TV. <laughs> Next thing we know, we see this big black German shepherd. <laughs> And he'd sit and beg for food, and I mean, he was everybody's oh, man. Yeah. yeah. I want to make something clear by saying that we're talking about dogs that we got for our home protection. Yeah. And this over-socializing, being overrated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, it's a total different story if you got a golden retriever, right. and you want him to become a therapy dog. That's right. Then, yes, I'm going to say socialize right. the heck out of That's him. That's right. But, but this but is a different situation. Well, I'm hoping... That you're going to give Lori the opportunity to give you her wisdom and experience on therapy training. Lori trains, Lori's trained out of hundreds, certified therapy dogs. Not just dogs that somebody think is nice and they take it to visit somewhere. Certification with $1 million insurance on it. This woman has trained and certified hundreds of those dogs. So... Um, yeah, we want to talk about personal protection, but training is there are many aspects of training. Yeah. Um, um, even uh, sometime in the future, probably, I want to discuss uh, wheelchair uh, training. A dog's trained in wheelchair for the obedience and uh, for personal protection. Okay, that's later on. Oh, down but that's the line. down the line. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, they're going to get into some obedience. Yeah. I, ta- I teach a different. Uh, um, more simple obedience than Lori, um, but uh, my obedience is, is uh, you can etch it in concrete. Mm-hmm. Um, once it's done, it is done, and it's for the basic dog, not for a dog that has to uh, do a whole bunch of stuff. You ain't going to go win a show with my obedience, but I've been telling you, uh, it works and it doesn't traumatize your dog. Uh, um, to make them do what you need them to do. And basically, I'll just tell you, it's three parts to obedience. As far as I'm concerned, don't pull me. Stop when I stop. When I stop, don't fidget around. Don't go twist the lead all around me so that I can't move. Don't impede me. And uh, follow me. Mm -hmm. Those are three tenets of my obedience. Uh, And based on don't uh, oppose me, dog. Don't oppose what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, pay attention to me and follow me. Mm-hmm. Don't pull me. And when I stop to talk to somebody, sit down or lay down. Let me talk. They're not talking to you. Mm-hmm. And if somebody comes up and goes, oh, why can I pet you? Not for my dog to anticipate being petted by some stranger that has a, a, a nice, soft voice. Mm-hmm. No, sir. That's not Again. what you Yeah. And it's the personal protection dog you got at home, and you're letting everybody That's get right. him. That's and right. He's friendly to everybody. How's he going to be any good when yeah. you need him? Bad guy threw up. He's going to talk nice you're to your dog. Him in. Here, find yeah. yeah. this way. I'll show you where yeah. the box is at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, no, no. Go ahead. What's the next question? Another question I have is this, um, you know, because uh, <clears throat> there's several different theories of thought and, and – uh, as far as like what a protection dog should look like and what a protection breed is. Sure. How can you ever I see a man you ever see a man almost jump in the middle of the street running from a mouse or yes. a rat or a squirrel? Exactly. <laughs> okay then. <laughs> exactly. So you what dog all dogs yeah. will make some effort to defend itself or its pack. Right. Strength of the pack is the dog. The strength of the dog is the pack. Mm-hmm. And so defense is there um, for their territory and for intrusion of something that could harm them. Right. Alarm, challenge, threat display. What does the person protection dog look like? It looks like your dog. Right. <laughs> Whatever yeah. the, person, the, person, the church lady come up with, that's what it looked 
like. Now, let's try to teach this dog to do some portion of these aspects of alarm, challenge, threat display, engagement. Right. That's why I use a beagle that she's going to send you to this. Uh, uh, and this beagle is a really good uh, watchdog. She sounds off, but uh, this was her first time actually being confronted and threatened. Right. So that's why we take it and send it to you. Hey, what are you doing out there? <laughs> coming to you from Rock of Ages Kennel. A few of you asked about the book saying that you didn't know too much about it. So I'm here today to tell you An Owner's Guide to Raising Your Pet Protector written by Gypsy and myself, two professional dog trainers, introducing the Canis Panther. This book was published in 2005 and still holds true full of advice today. So I'm just going to give you a little introduction on what the book is about. Oh, 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 hello. You guys knew I was going to have somebody in there today. Well, say hello, everybody. I'm a blue boy. How y'all doing today? Let's read this book, okay? Mwah. Let's read it. It's our great privilege and joy to be able to share some of our knowledge with the dog lovers. It's occurred to us that there was no basic manual for choosing, raising, and handling of dogs who people depend on for their home and personal defense. Most books that we have seen refer to or are promoting a specific breed 
and most training mentioned when it comes to your defenses based on sport and police activities. It has been our experience that most dog owners truly just want and need a pet that will deter bad guys from their appearance and how they act around the house. Oh, fuss button. Come on now. In fact, most dog owners never take their dogs to compete in shows and are not some paramilitary or hardcore sports group. With this information and understanding, we've put together some things that are sure will be helpful to you. And we're very happy to share this information, simple and precise, everyday dog training information. Oh, what? He don't like to be outside. He says, come on, I'm hot. Oh, did you all get some of that puppy breath? He say, uh, how about some puppy breath? How about some puppy breath? Can you give them guys some puppy breath? Let's see. Hello. Give him some. Hey, come on. Ah, oh, there it is. Did you catch that puppy breath, y'all? Did you catch it? It's just the sweetest thing, ain't it? I'm still taking deposits for Canis Panther puppies right now. I have male and females available. This guy's just three weeks old. So give me a call at 815-944-8209. I am Lori Berg owner, trainer, and breeder of the Canis Panther for the last 20 years. So please call me. And just one more thing I want to mention. Take a look at the cover of this book. I want you to take a look right there. That is Chief Little Dog. Have you heard about Chief Little Dog? Man, he is so outstanding. He's got videos that have been around the internet over a million times. So please go to YouTube and look for Canis Panther, Chief Little Dog, a Rock of Ages kennel. Look at some of the work he's done. Hey, bye. I gotta go rest. Bye now. Bye now.